Hi, I'm Daz. Um, I used to have one of these when I was younger. I was probably 10, 9 or something like that. Um, I quite like the styling. I suppose it's like a military style radio. It's long and medium. Um, takes AA batteries. And the last time I connected this up, nothing, not even a, not even a crackle when switching it on. So I'm gonna have a quick look and see what's going on. Well, I've got the uh, infamous epoxy case transistors in, and there's how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, now that's puzzling. Only slight thing that puzzles me here is the extra trimming capacitors, but I wonder if they're for long wave. That's a transformer, but only one, so I wonder if that's a driver transformer. Maybe the transistor's big enough to drive the speaker directly. What is it? 8 ohm. Half watt. Okay, oh, ceramic capacitors. Yeah, all disc capacitors, I think. I see a couple of diodes there. Not many electrolytics. Are they any good? Okay, let's put some juice to it. Right, let's see what's happening here. Ah, interesting. There is 15 milliamps of crescent current. Click, nothing. I don't even remember hearing a click. Pot must be behind the board, so I can't stick a finger on that and see if I can hum. I don't mind doing that when it's running off six volts. Um, put your fingers around the driver stage. Nope. No audio. Okay. What shall I try next? Right. Right. Headphone jack. Good and the battery's just gone flat. Is it good? Well, not brilliant, but okay. And of course, the other thing I'm going to try is the speaker. Yeah, speaker's good. Okay. Try a bit of contact cleaner on that. Okay, so the jack socket is conducting a lot better. I can see what I reckon is some emitter resistors here. Now let's have a look. What we got here? Come on, make a connection. 0.65 3 .7, 3 I wonder if that's the output capacitor there's nothing on that side let's have a look what's going on here can I get connection 3 volts well that's what I'd expect a push-pull stage to be biased at, so there's obviously um, it's obviously biased, so probably the output stage is probably okay then. Um, I suppose I'm going to need to 
sit the circuit board out and perhaps work back the other way now. Um, maybe the driver transistor's gone wrong. It's entirely possible. Question is, can I actually? Could even be an electrolytic, electrolytic, I guess. Can I get at the pins? Five. What are we getting? Hmm. This does not look easy to probe. Uh, I'm going to end up have a problem in a minute. Um, five. Hmm. Looks like zero. Looks like nothing. Five. I'm reluctant to keep bending these electrolytics in case I knock the track off at, on the other side. It looks like 0.6 to me there. It's so five point six and that one. Five. That looks like zero. Hmm. Bit suspicious about that. It doesn't really quite seem right. Okay, so I don't have a signal tracer, so I've connected up to the volume control. And uh, interestingly, there's a bit of DC on it. Um, as you can see, um, so I think it's something to do with uh, the way it's the pot may be used as a load. So that's what I may see. I'm just tuning the tuner, and no, there's nothing there, is there? Okay, so I know the tuner section's worked. I have done the finger on the pot test, and there's something there, but it seems not very sensitive. I flick the wave change switch. Yeah, there's some sensitivity there. So maybe the local oscillator isn't working. That might be might be a problem. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Low cost rate is working then. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so I'm just trying to inject a little bit of uh, IF. Yeah, it's peaking at 455 kilohertz. The most sensitive bit seems to be here to the uh, rectifier. Um, I'm just looking at what the scope's showing me. The scope is shown on the volume control a good 100 millivolts. Now I'd expect it to be louder in the speaker than that. I don't know if you can hear it, I can only just hear it myself, but... Mm, more than one problem, I think. I think I'm going to look at this audio amplifier first, and of course capacitors could be an issue. I could just go ahead and test them first, hmm, what to do first, but I think there's something wrong with the audio amplifier and I think there's something wrong with the IF stage as well, quite possible. Um, oh well, it's a challenge isn't it? Okay, this is what's at the volume control, across the outside of the pot, across its track, it's over 100 millivolts there and I'd expect it to be louder than that. So I suppose the obvious thing to try, have a look on the speaker. Ooh, that doesn't look nice. Have I got the right connection?
Ooh. No, it doesn't look good. Ah. Oh, I wonder. Hmm. I think a bit of signal tracing might be in order now. I wonder. oscilloscope. Well, that'll explain the audio problem. It's actually a dry joint on the output coupling capacitor. Mm. Recently discovered that as I was moving the scope probe round and uh, decided to probe on the output capacitor. Okay. I think I'll test it as well as um, look at replacing it but at least um, got a little bit more sensitivity now. Okay so I've removed the capacitor there wasn't a dry joint actually got an internal open circuit so that's a hundred microfarad 10 volt that's the output coupling capacitor Hmm. Now I've done that, I'm actually hearing radio stations very, very faintly. And I heard a little click from the speaker there, so there's some sensitivity here. I'm also looking suspiciously at... Uh, I'm going to look suspiciously at this... out The detector IF core seems very close to the top. Has the phantom twiddler been in? No, maybe not. Oh, well, we'll have to see what... See what um, the rest of the capacitors measure. If I've got one capacitor that's gone open circuit, it's possible I've got more. Though it would be fun to keep tracing faults, I think I'll check the other capacitors first and then we'll see what we get from there. I find this quite interesting that uh, when I turn my fluorescent light on, it's quite sensitive to the electrical noise. Yeah, I can only hear radio stations very faintly. Very suspicious of this. I think that must be the detector IF. There's a diode. Nice and sensitive there. That's topped right at the top of the can. Hmm. Is this. You know, I can't help thinking someone's been at this. <sighs> Okay, so I'm coupling some 455 in with this piece of wire here. Um, I'm going to... Yeah. Someone's been at this, haven't they? Yeah, that's cool. I keep backing it off.
about 40 dB lower than I was, so... Still no radio stations though, the sounds of it. Yes, it's a radio station there. I wonder if I wonder if everything else has been tweaked, so probably a full alignment now. Uh, okay, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to realign the local oscillator. At the moment I've got a 1.2 megahertz or 1200 kilohertz signal and got the dial pointing past 1600 kilohertz so it's obviously miles out Ooh, turn that down a bit because it's annoying I've got uh, a loop behind it from an old uh, music center an AM loop connected to the signal generator I've worked out that that is the local oscillator and that appears to be the tracking for the um, front end and I believe this is the oscillator tuning coil so if I'm going on the convention of how it's done in a valve radio uh, I assume that the coil will track at the bottom and this variable capacitor will track at the top so I guess it will be a bit of tracking each end high end and low end um, until I get them to line up again um, I'm assuming these these might be for long wave I'm just not sure they seem sensitive still um, so yeah I think that's what I'm gonna have to do It'll be a bit boring so finally after a bit of twigging um, 600 on the scale and there's 600 up tone 600 kilohertz tone I go to 1.4 megs 1400 hopefully not far out so that's not bad I, I don't expect a, a radio like this to track wonderfully but um, now I've got the frequency right, I've now tweaked the other preset at uh, 1.6 kilohertz, uh, um, 1.6 megahertz or 600 kilohertz. I've tweaked it um, for the best signal at that high frequency. So that's the IF done, it's the oscillator coil done. Now I think these have got something to do with long wave, so. I'll see what happens on long wave and uh, see which does what. Okay, so that's 240 kilohertz. It tracks nicely at 180 as well. So <coughs> that one was the local oscillator trim, and that one was the front end RF trim in the finish. So uh, that's good. Next problem I want to investigate is why it sounds so awful. Um, I was just listening to Radio 4 on it and uh, it doesn't sound right to me, so I'm going to try an external speaker, I think. Well, I'll play myself through here and you can hear what I mean. 
So right, next step I guess is to get it to bits. See what's going on inside. Right, back is off. Conveniently there's a little connector to enable me to take the back right off, so that's that's sounds absolutely dreadful so what I think I'll do is I'll try an extension speaker when I can find the jack plug that I seem to have now mislaid which is not surprising I've got so much stuff on the bench ah here we go I'm slider pots. Not sure what this board is but it was plugged into the power supply part. I'd say the speaker's shot, definitely. There's the usual bit of rubber glue around the speaker but I'm sure it'll come out okay. Well as it's naff anyway if I uh, bend it slightly in the process. But there's a couple of uh, brackets as well. I'll be careful. Right, let's get it out. Okie doke. So, I found another speaker in the loft. Uh, 8 ohms, 0.5 watts, same size. This one makes a scrapey noise, so that's obviously duff. I've replaced the uh, output capacitor that had gone intermittent open circuit. I've replaced the others, but they don't look too bad. But why not? Means I've got it to bits. Yeah, it looks like it's got a. Um, that sounds a, a little bit better. The raise head there, so that's good. Well, that's much better. A, uh, I don't suppose I should be expecting hi-fi quality from a radio. While I was inside it, um, I noticed there's a 78 date in it, so 78 could be, couldn't it? Um, I was thinking back as well when I had mine when I was a kid. I used to listen to Radio Luxembourg on it and Radio Caroline, believe it or not. Um, I guess Radio Caroline's coming back soon, isn't it? Legally. <laughs> so you never know. I'm not that far from Essex. Maybe I'd hear it again. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, that's another thing on my shelf that's been sitting there for two years, for repaired. So, uh, excellent.